Welcome back guys to Psycho Enigma's F1 2016 and my career mode playthrough. It's round number 7 and we are in Canada for this weekend. A personal favourite of my circuit. Having a look here, Mercedes and Sauber have definitely made some upgrades to their car for this weekend with the long straights and the challenging corners. So it'll be a good, it's a good track usually. You do see some upgrades usually come at Canada just before sort of like the power tracks and the big straight line tracks. Uh, we'll be getting a new rival this weekend as Esteban Gutierrez was beaten. Uh, you can see here we've got 772 resource points uh, and I did discuss in Monaco that I was going to look to get two upgrades by... Uh, doing like the R&D for this weekend and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in practice. Probably going to go engine and drag, I think, for Baku and Austria. They'll be beneficial. We are currently 8th in the championship. You can see we've got all the level 1 upgrades there as per the progress history. So it's going to be interesting to see that go up uh, as we go on. We're now sort of in the midfield, just behind Williams there and above Toro Rosso. So here we go into practice 1. Track acclimatisation, it was pissing it down in uh, in practice one and as you're going to see here as per the um as per the track acclimatization we did a picture perfect lap got as many points as we physically could on our track acclimatization test uh, and i would say if you get the opportunity to do any practice programs in the wet uh, personally i would say do them because i found things easy i mean track acclimatization is pretty easy um i was going to do the tire wear test in the wet uh, but it swapped to intermediate conditions and my tires got destroyed so onto the qualifying pace again same session it you know went to intermediate pace pretty quickly so we were 1.3 above the delta by the time we crossed the line that easily got us the 50 resource points that we needed and we also as well we got all of the additional bonuses by the um from the team as well just notice that lap also put us in first place with the fastest lap so we got the additional 25 points from the team as well uh so pretty much we've like got we got perfect r d uh for canada essentially so here's our practice one and just racking up those points you'll see now we're up to 935 points and then in practice two came the or practice three possibly came the tire wear test on the super soft tires again all seven purple lap times and i'm getting used to doing the uh, the tire wear test on the controller you know i imagine on a wheel you can you know do your throttle and your and your wheel inputs a little bit easier the controller it's a bit harder um, but i'm getting used to it a bit more so there we go another perfect test so we're going to get our resource points for that test as well and that's going to bump us up to just over a thousand points there um, not quite enough for both upgrades, unfortunately. I did go and have a look, think, can I book them in now? Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough for the two of them. I think I was like 40 points shy, something like that. But by the time we did qualifying and the race, we would easily have Guess enough there. Guess who made there. the gossip columns this morning? Everyone's talking about this new rival you have. Check his stats out. Well, would you look at that? We've uh, we've been uh, providing a new rival, Roman Grosjean. Since we beat Esteban Gutierrez, we now get Roman Grosjean as our rival, as the other guy in the Haas Formula One team. And I get the feeling he's going to be a bit more of a challenge than uh, than Gutierrez was. Hi, how are you? I'm just passing on your qualifying goals for this weekend. Emma passing on those goals. So now the team do want us to qual start qualifying in the top ten. So we're now being officially recognised as a team that should be getting midfield points. Here's the results for Q1 that were in intermediate conditions. We qualified third. We do appear, but it's a role reversal. This this year we're good in the wet, um, whereas other games, you know, I've not been as competitive in the wet. Here we go at the end of Q2. We're coming across the chicane now. Uh, our run out wasn't the best as compared to our delta time, uh, but other laps were pretty damn good or other aspects of the lap we went fastest on that lap uh, but i believe lewis hamilton went out again and was actually fastest at the end of the session uh, but only by 13 hundredths or 13 thousand should i say and rosberg was only like 9 thousand slower than me so pretty close at the top i was hoping for a wet q3 but we didn't get one unfortunately so you're gonna join us at the tail end of our lap in Q3. Uh, now obviously the Renault still doesn't have the best straight line speed and I, our car still feels a bit heavy. Uh, I was too conservative on my first lap so I went absolutely hell for leather on this lap. This was like my final fresh set of ultra softs that I could use. Opening up the DRS as soon as possible. Not quite being able to get a drag from Kevin Magnussen's car just up ahead of us. We do need to qualify above Magnussen so we're going to attack this final chicane. Oh dear the front wing causing the sparks off the ground, opening up the DRS again, charging towards the start finish line. Where is this beast of a lap going to put us? It's ninth. It's ninth place. I threw absolutely hell for leather and just to see that come in at ninth place, I was I was disappointed. I really was. And the fact that we were still four tenths off a of Williams. Now, I know that, of course, the Williams is going to be very quick in the straight line, but 
and there didn't appear to be much I could do. So I'm like, oh, well, it's going to be fringe points this weekend for us then. Uh, but here's our R&D and the, uh, like the resource points uh, based upon the fact of qualifying. And then we'll get the rivalry update again. And we're going to start building against Roman Grosjean because we out-qualified him and were fastest in every sector because Grosjean's lap was in the wet and, of course, ours was in the dry. Uh, the team, I mean, they've got no real reason to want to wanna get rid of us. We've, we've achieved every goal pretty much they've put in front of us. Okay, so the team want us now to finish in the points and the usual stuff of beat Grosjean and beat Magnussen. So, uh, without further ado, it's time for the Canadian Grand Prix. After I, uh, after I do my resource points, by the sound of things. So essentially, yes, we are going to be looking to do the. Uh, we're going to be looking to do the uh, the engine upgrade, and yep, there we go. There's the engine upgrade as well, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the drag as well, because if we do it now, we have the race will go by, and then they should be on the car for next weekend. If you want flat out racing, you've come to the right place this weekend, as it's full throttle for 59% of this 2.7 mile circuit, peaking at around 210 miles per hour going into the final chicane. But that speed requires discipline, and there are more than a few close walls here just waiting to punish drivers with a heavy right foot. It's a favourite for fans and drivers alike then here in Canada. We're used to seeing the unexpected happen here, and with me today to enjoy it all is Anthony Davidson, a man who knows firsthand the surprises that can pop up in this race. I do indeed. I had a good chance at some points here in 2007, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't meant to be. My old colleague Takuma Sato, though, he managed to finish six, so the team took home three valuable points, and that was a big boost to everyone at the time. I'm not sure I can think of anywhere else that so consistently provides the kind of late race excitement we get here. Obviously, towards the end of the Grand Prix, the brakes are getting worn, maybe the weather situation has changed, so there's a lot to keep fighting for all the way up to that final corner. We need you to put in a good performance today. Let's show the team that you deserve that number one seat. It's a fairly simple strategy, one stop, start on the soft compound tyre, switch to the uh, to the super soft. I'm not having what happened to me at Russia happen again by going uh, for the soft, like, yeah, just go for the hardest tyre and make sure that's included in the strategy because I don't want to be doing that extra pit stop at the end. It was just, it was so frustrating. Um, I know I didn't have the footage for Russia and I do keep bringing it up. I am sorry, but um, there was nothing I could do with that there. So anyway, let's focus on Canada. We have Felipe Massa ahead of us on the ultra soft tyre and we have Kevin Magnus and our teammate on the same compound tyre as ourselves for the soft tyre. But here we go. Leading up to five red lights and the Canadian Grand Prix is go. It looks like it's been a poor start by Sebastian Vettel. We've ducked out from behind and we're in the slipstream of Massa. We're now looking to head up behind Jensen Bunn. Going into turn one, diving down the inside. Careful on the brakes this time, though, kicking up a bit of dust as we filter in behind the gun McLaren. Almost punt Massa in the rear. We're going to get a good drive as Button was out on the marbles. We're now side by side with the McLaren as we head up into the next corner. They're looking to go down the inside of Massa on the ultra soft. It would be best to try and get ahead of him if we can. Massa's gone out wide and it looks like there's been contact in the mirrors as there was a, uh, a yellow flag momentarily just there as we filter up behind Daniel Ricciardo and there's Lewis Hamilton is essentially slowing up the field by the looks of things just here but let's have a quick look and see what happened to Felipe Massa he went out wide oh and he's tapped Kevin Magnussen as he came through and he's, he's caused a bit of a pile up back there it looks like Kimi Raikkonen is stuck down there down the order but then as we come to the end of lap one we get an audacious move on Daniel Ricciardo into the hairpin he was caught napping a little bit he's going to get a lot better drive than us though as he took the wider line but it does look as if we are able to pull ahead of him as we go onto the back straight here, heading down towards the final chicane. Ricardo and Button going to be slipping into our slipstream here. And up ahead, we've got Sebastian Vettel looking to make a move on Lewis Hamilton there. Oh, he's, for he's forced the Mercedes wide. Hamilton trying to come back. They're both slow out of the chicane. We're going to duck round and fly through up into fourth position off the final chicane at the end of lap one. Let's look at that from onboard. Lewis Hamilton as he went wide, attempt to cut back on Vettel, who wasn't very aggressive in his move. And we're going to come sweeping through and be able to pick up the pieces on that one and up into fourth position as we now go to the second lap and as you can see in the top left Alonso and Verstappen trading places we're going to jump on board with Alonso an ultra soft shot McLaren down the inside of the red ball there and he's just playing got him and Max just shaking off the exit there so Alonso is making the moves 
in the early part of the race. Kevin Magnussen's now out of the Grand Prix. What is going on? He's opening a few laps. He's down the inside of a Haas car, and he's gone wide. He's tapped the barrier. He's clipped what looks like a manor there, and he's gone round, and oh, he's been hit by looks like a Toro Rosso back there. Let's go on board, trying to pass what looks like Grosjean. Going wide, he's going to tap the wall. His time makes contact. Well, he's out of the race already, and then, oh, the... Toro Rosso to come around, punts him out. It's Carlos Sainz. We're now going to see it on board from the Spaniards. He comes through. Uh, Ma Magnussen's already out, and uh, he was coming across the track, but Sainz should have been able to see it from there, from that point of view. And now Esteban Gutierrez is out of the race, closely followed by Danny Kvyat. This is only lap three, and they're dropping like flies. What's actually happened here? On board with Gutierrez. It's happened in the same spot. He's just gone straight into the wall and taken his wheel off. On board with Kvyat, and he's just, he's just followed suit. He's just followed through. Maybe in the dirty air that's affected him. And you can see Science is still trying to get the car around. On the end of lap uh, lap four, though, beginning of lap five, Sebastian Vettel, though, is down our inside, coming into the chicane, and there's not much we can really look to do about that. Vettel placed his car really well. We tried to get a tighter line and a better exit. We are going to slot the car into the slipstream, though. Even though he's got DRS, the slipstream's pretty damn powerful on this game. Dive it down the inside of turn one. Can we make it stick? We've done a good move, but into turn two, Vettel's got the inside line. Science is now coming out of the pit lane on the super soft tyre. It's three wide. We get stuck on the side pod of the Toro Rosso, and it allows Vettel to get through for fourth position, although we're going to cut later on now into the hairpin, lap five. Now we are going to have DRS against Sebastian Vettel. We're on the same compound tyres. So there's no sort of advantage or disadvantage here. And this lap, we're going to be looking to use DRS while our uh, engine and our MGUK might not be as powerful as the Ferrari, but we're going to use the DRS on the back straight. Probably not look to get him in the chicane, but if we can carry enough speed through here, line him up perfectly, we'll get a second helping, a second bite of the cherry, if you will, of DRS in the slipstream of Vettel. We're going to go for the small gap on the inside, squeeze it through ever so lightly, set our personal best of the race so far, send it down the inside, back up into fourth position. Solid racing between myself and Sebastian Vettel there. I mean, he squeezed me, but he was fair. Now on to lap 10, though, as Lewis Hamilton looks to go down the inside. A very half-hearted move into the hairpin. We've gone wide. There's been a little bit of contact there, and I don't know, Lewis. I don't think that was my fault with your hand up in the air, but either way, we're going to drop into the slipstream. On the back straight, again, Hamilton with the DRS, but our, our drag update... Probably looking to do some assistance here as we go down the inside of the final chicane. Hamilton runs it out wide, and we're going to go through into that position. And here's some, something interesting. Alonso, remember Alonso on those ultra soft? Yeah, he pit at the end of lap 12, and he's already a pit stop ahead of us. So that indicates just how much speed the top three have compared to us, and more to the point as well, probably the speed the guys behind us have and can't use because we're essentially in their way. Uh, we come on to the end of lap 13 now. Daniel Ricciardo is now looking to make an assault against us. He's, he's quite a way ahead of his Red Bull, but he's, he's been tentative into the braking zone. He's gone wide. He's left the door open. We've made contact. There's a yellow flag. Daniel Ricciardo spun out, and it looks like straight into the path of Lewis Hamilton there. Let's watch this again on a replay. Ricciardo looked very hesitant to turn in, and then he... I don't know. It's difficult to tell. Let's watch it back from Ricciardo's point of view. You see, he doesn't turn in. He made no attempt to go left and over the curb. It looks very 50-50 though. Here's a slow-mo from Ricardo. So he turns out the corner, looks to turn back in, car sliding. We're down the inside. We've got the more direct route. Still turning right is Ricardo. Only now does he straighten up and try to turn left, but he's still sliding. It's too late. He's made contact with our front wheel. Difficult to tell. Uh, very difficult to tell. We had the racing line essentially, and Ricardo went out wide, and you can see him here spinning into the path of Hamilton and causing that front wing damage to both cars, as it were, there. So. Uh, we were pretty much unchallenged for the remainder of that stint as we went on to lap 20. So here we come. We can come into the pits. Verstappen is ahead of us on super soft tyres now. So essentially it's going to look like he's going to the end, going from soft to super softs. Um, we're going to come in now on lap 20 and just go sort of 14 laps to the end on the uh, on the super softs. I did debate myself about putting on a set of ultra soft tyres, but I didn't want to risk it. Didn't want to, you know, have my tyres blow up, you know, especially after what happened at Monaco. Uh, Grosjean is up in fourth, so he's doing a good job for Haas, you know, and obviously we need to Haas or Haas, however you want to pronounce it there. Um, looks like Kimi Raikkonen has fought through the field on his ultra soft tyres now, uh, and he's up into sixth place. So he almost got ahead of us there, but we have come out ahead of him after our pit stop, and I think it's still a net fourth position for us here, but Kimi is still looking to charge for his. He comes down the inside on lap 21. We're going to hold it around the outside of the chicane, look to take the inside line and up ahead, but Here's the thing, Kimi was on Ultrasoft, and if he's on Ultrasoft at this point of the race, there's no way, realistically, he's going to the end of the race, uh, just because the tyres would essentially wear out. So, 
realistically speaking, we shouldn't be fighting him here because it's just going to cost us time in comparison to the guys behind us that could be catching us. Regardless of that, we're going to go in. We're going a little bit hot into the hairpin just here on lap 22. Raikkonen's, of course, going to take advantage, rightfully so. Why wouldn't you? The wide line's going to mean we get a, a longer exit, more power. We've got up to speed better. Kimmy's going to have DRS, though, as of course, as we go down the back straight. So we're still ahead at this point. They're still gaining, but Raikkonen's going to look to try and send one down the inside the chicane, is he? No, he thinks better of it, so... Um, obviously, better thought like he just wasn't far enough and he realised that sacrificing his front wing wasn't going to be the best. Here comes Kimmy again now, around the outside, still on that set of ultra soft tyres. You see Button's behind us now on the soft compound, so he's gone from super softs to softs. Uh, and Kimmy's done us there, but we're going to jump straight back into the slipstream. As I mentioned, slipstream is nice and powerful in this game. We're going to go to the inside again, wait until the gap opens up. Personal best lap again, send one down the inside at the start of lap 24 and get ahead of Kimmy Reichen and back into fourth place there for the Renault team as we're now looking to get these uh, these stronger results. And once again, into the hairpin, I started to lose it on the super softs, like my braking marker, I just don't know what it was, I don't know if I wasn't paying enough attention, but Reichen has done us there, into the hairpin, once again, jump back into the slipstream, before DRS is even open, pull out, probably not smart on my, uh, on my mind, because... Raikkonen essentially is now using the DRS, but we've been later on the brakes. Can we go around the outside? Raikkonen compromises his line. We'll take a big chunk of curb on the inside there, but we'll go through again up into fourth place. Still battling Kimmy here as we now go to lap 25 now. It, this did keep me amused in my final stint. We've taken too much curb on the inside. It stepped the back end out, and now here comes Raikkonen again. Going to power through. He's on the inside now uh, on the ultra soft tyres. He's going to be able to brake later, turn in, have more grip. And he's, he's placed his car perfectly, if I'm 100% honest, to prevent any kind of switchback move. And he's beaten us now. And Raikkonen up into fourth place uh, as we fall down to fifth. But at the end of lap 26, he'd built quite a gap to us, but he peeled into the pit lane. So my hunch of him having to have one more stop was indeed correct. So I don't know what sort of compound uh, he started on, but definitely running a two-stop there. Could have been changed because of the calamities at the start. But essentially, that that was it really. Um, I answer my own question because Raikkonen ran on to a set of ultra softs. Um, Grosjean went up into fifth place. He set some ultra softs. Tried to chase us down but he didn't have enough speed. Raikkonen must have been coming through just you know with a face the same colour as his Ferrari because he got the gap down to us to about two seconds again. Bearing in mind he only made a pit stop about nine laps ago. So Raikkonen showing some great speed at the end of the race. We're going to come through though for fourth position in the Renault and this is going to be 12 more championship points that we definitely would never say no to. So, really strong performance again from us. We had some good performances against some of the other guys. And I think, the, you know, again, just cementing the fact we should be the number one driver for the team. So, another fantastic victory for the Silver Arrows. And I have to wonder, Anthony Davidson, just what set them apart from the competition here. The difference was clearly in the strategy. You could tell they'd done a lot of work on the pit wall to really optimise each stint and get the most out of the tyres. And it highlights just how much of a team sport this really is. Um, but credit to the driver as well though, there's no good having a well-oiled machine behind the scenes without a talented hand on the wheel, of course. And here are our podium drivers today after that excellent race. They've excelled here as they so often do, and it's a well-deserved victory. Mercedes then are on top today. So there you have it. That's the Canadian Grand Prix. Nico Rosberg, Verstappen and Alonso were your podiums. Alonso there on pace as well. I mean, probably helped by the fact we were a cork in the bottle for the rest of the field. But we've moved up to 7th in the Drivers' Championship. On now 42 points, we move ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Roman Grosjean got a few points, but he's now 10 behind us. And Renault now 5th in the Constructors' Championship. So, you know, we've jumped Toro Rosso there by 10 points. They might have picked up a few today. Um, you know, aside from... Uh, as you know, Kvyat was out of the race and Science just, you know, blew it. Whatever happened there. Pick up some more resource points just to, you know, build upon uh, a small total that we have now after blowing a load of it on a, on a big upgrade. But I think it's going to be worth it. I'm looking forward to Baku. It's a new track. Still not even tried it on Quick Race. Um, so it's going to be a difficult one. Um, it's interesting now because Grosjean is now building points in the rivalry. Um, but, you know, we're still five ahead of him. So, um, yeah, Baku will be interesting next uh, next time. 
uh, never driven it, so that's going to be fun in practice. Uh, so, but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. Leave a like down below, comment any feedback, subscribe to be the first to hear about the new content coming to the channel. Really enjoying F1 2016. I appreciate the support, and I'll see you next time.